Hello friends, this video on current electricity part 25 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 24 before going ahead with this one. We have to calculate the equivalent resistance between the points E and B. So since the circuit looks quite complicated, so it is little difficult to know the to guess the current distribution here. I mean, even if we try to say that okay, this much current goes here, we it, it we will get confused to find to keep a track of what current flows in which arm. So what we do, the approach which we follow for such circuits is divide this circuit into smaller parts and solve the smaller parts and reduce the circuit to simpler circuits. So the first part which we consider here is the part ACD. So we look at only this part ACD. So when we consider only this part, let us suppose from here current comes out. So how much current will go here? Let us say some current I1 goes here and I2 goes here. So this I1 is the same current which will flow through this 3 ohms as well. And this I2 will flow through this 6 ohms and they both will join together here and form, form back the same current I. Right? So if we consider only this circuit, what do we see? This 3 ohm and this 3 ohm, these two are in series because same current flows through both of them. And the, their series combination is in parallel with this 6 ohm because they have their starting and ending point as the same. So if you draw this, it will look somewhat like this. Let us say this is point A and this is point D. So you have one resistance here, another resistance here. This is 3 ohm, this is 3 ohm and this is 6 ohm. This is how it looks like. So these three, these two are in series. So that means 3 plus 3 becomes 6 ohms. So now you can reduce this to A, D. This is 6. And this also is 6. So you have two resistances in parallel. So for the part A, C, D, what is your equivalent resistance? Let us denote it by R1. So that is the parallel combination of 6 and 6. So 1 by R1 is equal to 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6. That is equal to 1 by 3. Therefore, R1 is equal to 3 ohms. So instead of this entire ACD, we can just replace ACD with this resistance 3 ohms. So now my circuit becomes little simpler. So let us draw the circuit again. Let us say this is point A. This is point B. So from point B you have one resistance till point F. From here you again have another resistance. From F you again have a resistance till point E. Here you again have another resistance. So from E you again have a resistance till point D. And now instead of drawing this ADC, I just replace it with one resistance and that resistance is R1, that is 3 ohms. Now all other resistance values are given in the problem. So we put these values as it is. So now if you look at this figure, you have reduced the figure little bit. So now your diagram is little simpler. So now let us concentrate on the next part that is ADE. So part by part we will solve the problem. So if you look at ADE again, if some current I1 flows through this and some current I2 flows through this, the same current I1 flows through this. So here also this 3 and this 3 are in series and the series combination is in parallel with 6 ohms. So it is exactly similar to the triangle ACD. So that means the equivalent resistance here, so equivalent resistance of ACD, let us denote it by R2, that will also be equal to 3 ohms because the values are also same. So you can now reduce your circuit this way. Say this is A, this is B. So from B you have one resistance till F. Here also you have another resistance. From F you have another resistance till E. So now instead of drawing A, E, D, you just draw one resistance and that resistance is 3 ohms. Right? So now your circuit became even more simpler. So now it is turn to look at AFE. So if you look at AFE, there also the same thing. This 3 ohm and 3 ohm are in series and the combination is in parallel with 6 ohms. 
So here let us say the equivalent resistance of A F E is R3 which will again come out to be 3 ohms. So here you can again further simplify the circuit like this. This is 3 ohms. From here you have 3 ohms till point F. Now instead of drawing A F E you just draw R3 that is 3 ohms. So now you have this final triangle. So in this also you can say the same thing. If you look at it, say I1 goes to this, I2 goes to this, the same I1 will flow through this because from here current is entering, say I current is entering, it is dividing into I1 and I2 and from this the current will terminate, right? Because we have to find out the equivalent resistance between these two points A and B. So I1 goes here, I2 goes here, so this same I1 will flow through this also. So that means this 3 and this 3 are in series. So we can draw it like this, let us say this is A, this is B, this is 3 ohms and the other part is this 3 plus 3 that is 6 ohms, right? So this is how it will look like, therefore R equivalent of the circuit that is equivalent resistance of the circuit will be parallel combination of 6 ohms and 3 ohms. So that is 1 by R equivalent is equal to 1 by 6 plus 1 by 3. So this is equal to 1 by 2 or we can say R equivalent is equal to 2 ohms. So this is the equivalent resistance of the circuit. So this is how we break down complex circuits into simpler circuits and make our solution easier. Okay. So let us go and look at the next problem where we will talk about Wheatstone bridge. I have already discussed about Wheatstone bridge when we were talking about capacitors in circuits. So the same Wheatstone bridge also has its application in case of resistors in circuits. So before I solve this problem where we have to calculate the equivalent resistance between points A and B, let me tell, tell you what a Wheatstone bridge is. Wheatstone bridge tells that if you have a circuit which looks somewhat like this, if the circuit is of this pattern, if there is a circuit with four resistors which are arranged in this pattern and if R1 by R2 is equal to R3 by R4, then we say that the Wheatstone bridge is balanced. So under this condition, the bridge is said to be balanced and when the bridge is balanced, in that case, we say that no current will flow through the resistor R5. So that means there will be no current which will flow through this resistor. That means R5 will not contribute in the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Right? So this is the principle of Wheatstone bridge. It says that if you have 5 resistors arranged in this pattern and if R1 by R2 is equal to R3 by R4, in that case, we say that the bridge is balanced and there will be no current flow through the middle arm, that is through the resistor in the middle. So the middle resistor that is R5 here will not contribute anything to the equivalent resistance of the circuit. So now we will solve this problem where we will, where we will see an application of Wheatstone bridge. If you look at this circuit in the question, do you think it resembles Wheatstone bridge? You don't. But now we will do something which will make it resemble the Wheatstone bridge. What is it? Just imagine it this way. If you pull A and B apart from each other, let us suppose these wires are nothing but they are threads. So if you hold point A with your one hand and point B with the other hand and pull them apart from each other, then what will happen? This B, point B will come somewhere here when you pull it apart. Similarly, this point A will come somewhere here. Now, along with A, this entire thing, this three arms will go out. So, it will look somewhat like this. Right? This is how it will look like if you pull A and B apart from each other. So, how will your circuit look like? The circuit will look somewhat like this. So now if you look at this circuit, does this circuit resemble Wheatstone bridge? 
Yes, it does. It is just that you will have to see it in the correct orientation. Instead of this A and B, here we have this A and B. So if you want, you can arrange the circuit in the correct pattern to get a better look of the same. So this is your circuit, right? So always try to observe the circuits very carefully. Okay, so in this case, if you look at R1, R2, R3 and R4, they are all same. Therefore, in this case also R1 by R2 is equal to R3 by R4. Therefore, the bridge is balanced. That means there will be no current flow across this capacitor, ac across this resistor R. So your circuit will become somewhat like this. Right? Now you have to calculate the equivalent resistance of this circuit which is very simple because these two resistors as we can see very clearly are in series. They are joined end to end. Similarly these two resistors are again in series. So from this we can again draw this circuit. So R and R in series will form 2R. Similarly R and R in series will form 2R. Therefore, the equivalent resistance of the circuit will be given by parallel combination of 2R and 2R. Therefore, 1 by R equivalent is equal to 1 by 2R plus 1 by 2R which is equal to 1 by R. Therefore, equivalent resistance of the circuit is equal to R. Clear? So, did you ever imagine that this circuit which we saw previously will ultimately become this circuit? No. So that is what is what will come in you with practice. So try to practice more and more problems and try to look at problems in all possible ways. Sometimes just in this problem if you see just pulling out A and B made things so simple. Right. So now we will look at few other uh, methods and rules which helps you to calculate equivalent resistance of complicated circuits. So this was the first one which, study, which we studied now, the, that is Wheatstone Bridge. So the next method which we will see is the Delta Star Transformation. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.